Stories are about change. If something doesn't change in your story, well, you don't actually have a story. And your reader is living vicariously watching that change as it happens to your protagonist. But when we talk about change, what are we actually talking about here? What is changing for your protagonist and how are we keeping track of what that change is and how it's happening throughout your story. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the six different types of change that you need to pay attention to in your story. And your protagonist is going to have change on all six of these levels. Now, some will be more than others and others will be kind of small, but you have to plan out how your protagonist is gonna go through change throughout the entire story on these six different levels. By doing this on all these six different levels, you'll make sure that there's a full three-dimensional view of your character. Instead of having a very flat story, a very flat protagonist, you'll look at it from all the different points of view that matter and make sure that your reader experiences a story where the change feels real and feels three-dimensional. Now, my name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid, and I'm the author of Running Down a Dream, The Threshing, and The Shithead. And my partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and he's a writer, editor, and story researcher with over 30 years of experience. And so everything that I teach in this video and everything we do here at StoryGrid is based on his extensive experience in the publishing industry and his very successful career. So what are these six different levels that you have to pay attention to in your writing and in your planning of your story for your protagonist? Well, before I get there, let me just give you a short framework of how I want you to apply each of these. So these are the things I want you to be thinking about. What is the beginning and ending value according to each of these levels? So where is your protagonist at the beginning of the story versus where they are at at the end of the story? At the beginning, they think assume, believe, value, blank, and at the end, they realize or value blank. And we're gonna look at each of these and how they apply to the world, the character themselves, the other characters in the story, and all kinds of different things. But we're gonna look at how each of these is going to shift. So let's just look at the first one, status. How has the protagonist's status changed from the beginning to the end. And we're gonna look at this through several different lenses. How has their status changed with their family, with their friends, with their coworkers, with people at their social club? And we're thinking about how those people view your protagonist. Has their status gone up? Do people view them better? Or do people view them worse? And we need to make sure that changes over the arc of the story. So if you look at the Broadway play Hamilton, you can see that over the course of the story, Hamilton's status with the world in general goes up. People think of him better at the end of his life than at the beginning. But then there's also factions where his status went down, where he either went up and went back down, or it just started high and went down throughout the story. And so you have to look at how your protagonist's status is going to change among all of the different groups that they actually interact with. So the next thing we're gonna look at is morality. And we're gonna look at what your protagonist actually values and what they would give their life for. That's kind of the overarching question. And a lot of times for our protagonists at the beginning, what they really care about, what they're really is important to them is completely different than at the end. So if we look at a character like Mr. Banks from Mary Poppins, we see that at the beginning of the story, the most important thing to him is his job and money and then by the end of the story, he realizes his kids and his family is the most important thing. So what he would actually give his life for at the beginning of the story versus the end of the story has completely changed. And this is how your protagonist changes on the morality scale. So that's the second one. What your protagonist would actually give their life for and what is most important to them changes. The third level is your protagonist's worldview. And this is what they hold to be true. So what do they believe at the beginning of the story that is true, that by the end of the story they realize is false, and vice versa? What do they not believe at the beginning that they believe at the end? So if we look at a story like American History X, we see Edward Norton's character has a major shift in how he views the world and the people around him in the world. So there's this fundamental truth that he wholeheartedly believes at the beginning of the story, and that has completely shifted by the end of the story. So what does your protagonist believe at the beginning of the story 
that they have to let go of and seize a new truth at the end of your story. That is the worldview. That's level number three. Now, the fourth level we're going to look at is your protagonist mortality. What is their relationship with life and death? So this is just very practical on the surface of your story. What is their relationship with life and death? Is their life ever put in danger? Is their physical well-being ever risked? And it could be something like big and dramatic, like they're actually going to be killed or a lot of people are going to be killed if they don't make a change. Or it could be something less dramatic where they might be risking their financial wealth and they might end up on the street or they might end up in jail if they make a bad decision. But we're looking at it purely through the physical. In what way has your protagonist's relationship with life and death changed from the beginning to the end of your story? The fifth level is connection. How has the connection with the other characters in your story changed for the protagonist from the beginning to the end? Which connections have gotten stronger and which ones have gotten weaker? So if we're telling a love story, obviously your protagonist's connection to another character in the story is going to be much stronger at the end than at the beginning. However, if your protagonist needs to actually shed some relationships in their life to grow, then the connections are actually going to weaken from the beginning to the end of your story. So when we're looking at how your protagonist interacts with all of the characters in the story, we have to know how those connections get weaker or stronger throughout the entire story. And the final level we're going to look at, number six, is where your protagonist derives their meaning. The world can be seen as a meaningless place. We can all tell a pretty simple story about how the world is meaningless, and yet we all go on and try to strive for something new, and your protagonist is the same. So why are they doing that? Where are they drawing their source of meaning, and how does that change from the beginning to the end of your story? We have to see some shift in where they're drawing their meaning from, from the beginning to the end of your story. So even if we look at a character like Hercule Poirot from The Murder on the Orient Express, we see that obviously he derives a lot of his meaning from justice, from meeting justice, from finding who did the bad thing and bringing them to justice. And yet, in this story, we see where he derives meaning from shifts because he ends up letting them go at the end of the story because he realizes there's something more important than just pure justice. And so when we look at this story, we see that where he derives meaning has shifted from the beginning to the end of the story. So these are the six levels that you need to look at your protagonist and understand how it changes throughout the story, what they value, what they believe, what happens to them, how that changes from the beginning to the end of the story. Now, again, depending on the story you're telling and what genre you're in, Different of these are going to be more dramatic than others. So if you're telling a love story, maybe there wasn't a huge shift on the life and death scale. But if you're telling an action story, there definitely will be. However, if you stand back and look at these, you start seeing like this gives you a full three-dimensional picture of your story and the change that your protagonist goes through. So we're looking at their status, how their relationships with the different groups in their life has changed. And then we also look at connections, how their individual relationships with individual characters have changed. We also look at their morality, what they actually value, what they would give their life for from the beginning to the end. But then we start going deeper and we look at what they hold true with their worldview and also what they actually find meaning in their life for. So all six of these levels have to line up and you have to have changed from the beginning to the end of your story. And if you track each of these levels, you're going to see that you're telling a much fuller three-dimensional story and it won't be flat and one-sided. So this is how you think through your protagonist. So your protagonist just isn't what their name is, what they do for a living, what they look like, where they're from. It's much more about how they change on each of these six different levels. So make sure you map these out before you actually start writing your next novel. Now, if you want to take this idea of writing a great protagonist and see how it actually works on the scene by scene level of your writing, I've got something great for you. Go to storygrid.com slash checklist, and I'm going to give you our 13 point scene writing checklist. This is the checklist we use in our workshops, in our trainings to make sure that you're writing a working scene. 
and I'm going to give you that checklist and I'm going to give you a walkthrough on how to apply it to your own writing. So make sure right now you go to storygrid.com slash checklist and download that. And if you found anything helpful in this video at all, make sure you click like and subscribe so you keep getting great content from us here at StoryGrid. And out of those six levels, which one was the most surprising to you? I'd like to hear that from you. Go down in the comments and leave that right now. I read every single comment and I love hearing what you're learning on this channel. But as always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid. And I'll see you next time.